Welcome to the Faith to You podcast. I'm Pastor Caleb Schrader. Today we bring you a special episode. This is one that I recorded in 2020. Um, it was during the pon- pandemic when we were on shutdown. This is actually when we first came up with the idea of doing these podcasts. Um, and a lot of those early ones um, didn't gain a lot of traction because people didn't know about them. So this is one of the podcasts that I'm really passionate about. I have a passion for hospitality. Um, And so I want you to listen to this, consider some of the ideas in it, um, and be encouraged. I hope that it blesses your heart. Thanks for listening. Good morning, faith community. I want to tell you a little bit about my life. When Leigh and I were first married, we were young. She was 20, I was 21, and we were still in college. We still had to finish our senior year of university. And during that year, we decided we wanted to start a Bible study for college-age students like ourselves. So we started inviting some of our peers from our community into our home. Now, I need to let you know, our home was a tiny 300-square-foot studio apartment. Eventually, our Bible study grew to a dozen people, and some nights we'd even have 20 people in there. But we were young and full of energy, and we loved it. We loved the community. We loved staying up late, worshiping, spending time in prayer together. Those are special times, and those were special memories. But soon we got married, moved into a bigger house, and we kept on doing our Bible study. Our our friends got married, and they had kids, and, and our Bible study grew more into a family Bible study. And let me tell you something, as it grew and as I got more and more invested in my career and in coaching, there were Friday nights when I came home and I was exhausted. I was tired. I didn't want to have a whole bunch of people in my house. I didn't want to have people over who I needed to work up the energy to entertain and to teach a Bible study. But I want to share something with you. Every single time we had that Bible study anyways, it was on the calendar, We were consistent people, so we did it. We had our Bible study, and every single time, I was blessed. By the end of the evening, I would always, always be rejuvenated. I would always feel spiritually refreshed. Going into it, I didn't want to do it. Afterwards, I felt reinvigorated. I think it's similar to when I wake up in the morning sometimes and I just don't want to go do my workout. I don't want to go for my run. But every single time I make myself do it, I feel better afterwards. You see, hospitality is a blessing we can choose for ourselves. I want to share with you today from 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 9. It says this, Be hospitable to one another without complaining. This is in the imperative, be hospitable to one another. And he's talking specifically about the church. We have a responsibility for opening up the doors of our homes to people within our community, within our assembly of saints. And it's not just said once in the New Testament. It's repeated three separate times as a command. First, here in 1 Peter 4, 9, again in Romans 12, 13, Paul says, Share with the saints in their needs. Pursue hospitality. And in Hebrews 13, 2, he says this, Don't neglect to show hospitality. For by doing this, some have welcomed angels as guests without knowing it. Now, he tells us how we're supposed to show this kind of hospitality in 1 Peter 4, 9. He says, do it without complaining. Well, why would anybody complain? Well, if you've had people in your home, you'll realize hospitality is messy. You have people with kids over, they might break things. Your guests might spill things. Your house might be messier after they leave. You might end up having to do a lot more work than you usually do. You know what? There's a story in the Bible where that's exactly what happened. In Luke 10, we have the story of Jesus going to Mary and Martha's house. Do you remember that? Let me read it to you. In Luke 10, 40, it says this, But Martha was distracted by her many tasks, and she came up and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Have you ever felt that way? You have guests over, and then you're stuck with doing all the work. Martha understands what you're going through, but listen to how the Lord responds. He says this, the Lord answered in verse 41, the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and upset about many things, but one thing is necessary. 
Mary has made the right choice and it will not be taken away from her. You know, in hospitality, it's not about the tasks. It's not about the doing. It's about the connecting. Jesus says there's one thing that's necessary. You have somebody in your home. There's only one thing you need to do. And what is it? It's what Mary is doing. She's sitting there at the feet of Jesus. She's connecting with him. She's hearing from him. She's learning from him. That's what hospitality is all about. It's not about the entertainment factor. It's about the connection factor. All that you need to do to be hospitable is find ways to connect with other people. It doesn't even need to happen in your house. It can happen in a coffee shop. It can happen on a street corner. Right now, it can happen standing in your driveway. It can happen pulling up alongside somebody in a, in a parking lot and sharing a conversation because hospitality is about connection. This is a call to make connection with your fellow saints, like Mary sitting at the feet of Jesus. Really, the word, it, it means to be generous to your guests. The word hospitable, it means being generous to your guests. Jesus sort of demonstrates this in Luke 6, 38, when he says, give and it will be given to you a good measure pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. Uh, Jesus is explaining that we're supposed to give excessively, generously. And, and he uses this illustration from the ancient Near Eastern culture. In the ancient Near East, if you had a guest over and you wanted them to really feel comfortable in your home and you wanted them to understand that everything you had was for them, you, they would, you would have them hold out their hands and make a bowl with their hands. And then you would pour oil in their hands until it overflowed into their lap. And that was a way of signifying what's mine is yours. Our idiom today is, my house is your house, or mi casa es su casa. We understand that, and that's what it means to be generous to your guests. That's what that word hospitable means, to show generosity. That can happen in your home. That can happen anywhere. The imperative is that we're making room in our lives for connecting with each other. Now, what happens in our lives? Because we're so busy, we don't make connections. We have so much on our plate that we never have time to connect. So here's my challenge. During this pandemic, we have been denied the community that's essential to us as believers. So you decide today to make a commitment to find ways to connect with your fellow believers outside of just the assembling on Sunday. Find ways to connect with your fellow believers, write it down today, and then follow through with yourself in the future. You know, the reason that I had those Bible studies on Friday nights when I was exhausted was because I had already made the commitment. It was already written on the calendar. Make an appointment, write it down, tell somebody, we're going to have you over for a barbecue when all this is over. We're going to have you to our house. We're going to go out for a meal together. We're going to go grab coffee. Whatever it is, find a place to be generous to guests, to com co connect with the community of saints that surrounds you. Hospitality is a blessing you can choose for yourself. Choose that blessing for yourself today.